Welcome back. And today we're going to talk about how we talked about this before. Let me give you another perspective. The title to today's video will be how election in may not impact the housing market. Welcome back, everyone. And my co-host is none other than Julie. How are you, Julie? I'm fine. Good morning, Celine. How are you? Fine. Thank you. My pleasure. So without further ado, Julius, let's go ahead and dive deep into an article that I uh, pulled from John Burns Consulting, who I believe is a very credible house market data company. Mm -hmm. And their articles right here, you and I recently talked about this and let's use another spin to this topic. Right. Essential elections don't hurt home sales. Right, I like that. Okay. Now, what's funny, before I begin, uh, Julie, I, I speak and I consult with my invest, uh, real estate investors within my network uh, pretty consistently, not that many on a weekly basis. And <laughs> Several, weeks, several of my investment investors, they are not going to buy any investment property until after the election. Interesting. I want you to hold that thought. And, okay. And you and I have a very counter opinion around that, right? And hold our thoughts until uh, we, uh, we go over this okay. article. Sounds good. Yeah. So the, the key takeaway from this article by John Burns just came out uh, a few days ago maybe a few weeks ago, this is right here. The, the key takeaway about elections versus housing market. Mm -hmm. The annual seasonal decline in home sales is no worse in election years than in non-election years, according to 35 years of data. Oh my goodness, wow. Okay, just mm -hmm. to put everything into historical perspective. Absolutely, okay. yes. Further, greater than expected seasonal declines in home sales mostly reflect poor, alleged poor economic conditions, recessions, or other downturns, and ignore the loudest voices in the room. <laughs> home purchases are usually light decisions rather than political ones. What did you quick? What What are your quick wow, thoughts? Wow, that's interesting. That's very interesting. First of all, I love the 35 year history. So you can compare. I, I think the thing that's impactful about that is that both parties have been in office. <laughs> and it kind of doesn't matter, is I think what the, the point of the article is saying. And it's a life decision, not a political decision. So if you're thinking about waiting, you shouldn't be waiting. I know you, I don't want to get too far into to your subject, but yeah, it's like it doesn't really make a difference. If you buy it now or, or buy it in 30 days after the election. <laughs> Julie, especially as a losing investor, when you make a decision, it's a business decision. It's right. not an emotional decision. Exactly. You know, hear investors saying, oh, I'm not going to buy any investment property until after the election. <laughs> this is a, they are not really a legitimate losing investor. But a real successful losing investors does not take election under consideration when they buy the property. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. For those several investors that directly spoke with me, mm -hmm. they, for them to say that, I have to like, oh, are you serious? I don't know. Are you a really true investor? What makes mm -hmm. you make such an emotional response to the election? That have nothing got to do with your personal wealth building. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's go on. I know you... Presidential elections have little impact on home sales in the five months leading up to elections. I know elections is right around the corner. And right. Further, this article says we have found that this type of buyer is the exception rather than the rule. I'm not going to go over all the data, all this political data. People can pause this video and read the data yourself. Again, it's just a graph. You can pause this video and just analyze all the numbers uh, of mm -hmm. all the three elections and what happened in the housing market afterwards. You have very little impact on what the housing market does. All right. Sure. So, sure. so let's, let's skip through that a little bit. And then uh, here's another uh, headline here. Greater than seasonality, uh, greater than seasonally expected mm -hmm. slowdown in home sales is more correlated with a alleged weak economy than mm -hmm. the special elections. 
Okay. Right? And here it is again. These people can watch it. The, they can download this article, John Burns Consulting, if they wish to. It's out there to available to the public. So compare all the numeric analytical data based on past 32 years of history. If you don't know the history, if you do not know past history, you're doomed to repeat the past. There you go. <laughs> oh, who said that? I'm going to find yeah. out. Must be some philosopher. What right. Are 100, 200 year, years ago. I don't know. I'm just guessing. So again, personal circumstances to drive home purchase decisions more often than politics. Yeah, while political discourse can be loud and pervasive, it rarely translates into significant changes in home buying behavior. Mm -hmm. Let me share you some of these comments that are made by those irrational people out there that are using election as an excuse to not to do anything, especially around housing or any other purchases for that matter. Not just housing. We're talking buying a car, buying something on credit, buying a house, buying an investment property. We all relate to the same thing, right? You mm -hmm. cannot get emotional. So what are the quotes, some of the several quotes are here used on this article. Uh, by a typical consumer who is uh, who, who uses the skills as an election, everyone is worried about rigs and the election. So, a lot of uncertainty back in May, yeah. uh, a few months ago. Another right. consumer quoted, "Lots of buyers are waiting for lower interest rates, and uh, some are also waiting for after the presidential ele election in hopes of lower prices and rates." And another poll. Consumers are feeling extremely uncomfortable with the economy and the upcoming election. Look, economic factors like interest rate and job data or recessions, they are economic related. They are the presidential candidates, either Trump or Harris, they themselves does not directly dictate how the economy is going to turn, right? Correct. Right. Add on another layer of using election as a, another is, excuse on top of multiple excuses those people have, those consumers and investors have. It's just mind boggles me I have for, for the, the mm -hmm. way they're so irrational. But be wary of extrapolating broader trends from these anecdotes. The data just doesn't back it up, okay? At the end of the day, this article in John Burns says, 92% of consumers are not postponing a home purchase Due to the presidential, elect, uh, presidential election, 92%, only 8%, as you can see right here. Mm. You got the survey that was done by John Burns. Uh, are you delaying any of the following major purchases until November, specifically due to 2024 yeah. election? And here are the, the results of this uh, uh, quick survey. Vehicle purchase, 85% ignore election. That's the reason why they buy or do not buy. Only 50% or election related, 10% of the people have said the election is impacting their purchase. Look like a home purchase. Eight, like I said, 8% mm -hmm. of the people are feel the election is preventing them from buying a home mm -hmm. or investment property. But 92% believe that's irrelevant. And everything else is at a very low. Okay, so majority, as you can see right here, the majority do not factor in election as a reason why they they do not purchase certain sure. consumer items. So my takeaway is, my quick takeaway on this video, Julie, is that, yeah, every individual, they have their own unique goals and objectives. They can control their money. They can control their finances. They have a life situation. They have to personally, account. it's a personal accountability right. they, based on themselves and their family, their goals, their challenges not factors they have no control of. They cannot control who wins the election, what the impact of the election is going to be afterwards, after the fact, or the economy, or the recession, or inflation, or the mortgage rate. Those are beyond your control. If you're right. ready to buy investment property, or you're ready to buy a primary home, if the situation is right for your life and your situation, if you have financially ready, you have your cash reserve, you have a good job stability and whatever, Hold the trigger now. I love the fact that you showed the actual statistics. Um, people, are they waiting after the election to refinance or buy a car, or buy a house? 
And the majority are not. It is not affected. So I think it, it really dispels that gloom and doom that so many people put out there that, oh, yes, you should wait till after the election, depending on who's in office, things will be so much better, things will be so much worse, whatever. And you just really have to, and, and now you've shown statistically, it doesn't matter. People generally are not waiting for anything that are really interested in making those decisions. And I think it speaks back to what you said earlier. When people come up with these excuses, they're all waiting for the election, are the interest rates go down? Are they really investors? Are they really in the market to really purchase something and have a life-changing difference? As, I, and the bottom line is, people like that, I would say, no, no, they're not ready. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. Just an extra layer of excuses among exactly. multiple excuses they already have. So they're not ready to buy a house to live in. They're not ready to buy investment houses. They, uh, they have to overcome their self-inflicted in, uh, wounds. So right. self-inflicted, as we conclude, you see any value whatsoever from this video, please like and subscribe to our, my YouTube channel. And also, if you have not already done so, please put your email on my website so you become a free member of our Real Estate Investment Network. Every morning, hopefully every morning, you will receive a free newsletter into your email inbox so you can learn more about real estate investing and learn about, more about housing market, economic news, all areas of uh, real estate. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah. See you all next time. Have a nice day.